Hey everyone, this is Daniel and in today's video we're going to talk about Power Apps, how to block users from using an app. Now in this scenario, users will have access to the app but they do not have access to the backend data source which I'll be talking about is SharePoint. And so how do you factor that in from a permission standpoint? How do you know where, hey, users are accessing the app, but because they don't have access to the backend data source, let's go ahead and redirect them to another screen so that they know, hey, something is still not accessible. And that is what I'm going to cover in this video. So stick around. This is very important. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. And let me just start with the full demo so you know what our final outcome is going to be like. So as you can see over here, this is my Power Apps Canvas app and this is what I call as the portal app. It's the central place where people go ahead and have links to all the other apps that I have. Other apps could actually be completely separate Canvas apps, but this is like the main portal app. All right, so if you've got access to the app, you still will be able to enter the app. You actually click on the app, you would actually come to a screen. But what I'm going to show you is that if you don't have access to the backend database or the data source, you get redirected. So here's the app. Now let me show you one of the situations where it actually works. So Rosanna over here has access to the data source. So when she actually clicks on the link, she's able to come to the main screen. This is what it looks like. However, we've got another scenario where a user is technically got access to the app because look, the Canvas app opened up. However, the user doesn't have access to the backend data source and we've done some magic in the backend to confirm that. And because the user doesn't have access, it gets redirected to this denied screen that I call it. And we've got basically the user's information, which in this case is Finn. It just puts a text over there's a, hey Finn, you currently do not have access to the app. For more information, click here. And in that click here link, you could put a launch to any other site. This is the final outcome over here. Remember, same app, but different permissions, therefore different launch screens. So let's see how I went and did that. Now, the one thing I do have to point out is this new declarative alternative for Navigate. Now, you might have already heard about this because this has been out now for almost a year. But say you have any apps that have been fully functional and you haven't touched them for over a year, the next time you open them up and say you've got some kind of navigation in the on start, well, you will have to make that change because here's the important thing. Now we cannot actually do it and use the navigate in the start screen. We've got to go ahead and switch that and it has its own navigate function. So I'll be showing all of that in this video. However, I just want to make sure I point that out. So let's go check out the app. So we're back in the canvas app studio over here. And as you can see, I'm going to click on the app and in the app, the start screen property, that's the one that we'll be spending most of the time for the rest of this video. Also talk about the data source. So I said that my data source is a SharePoint list, but that's not the importance of it is what way if it's a SharePoint list is what is the permissions that is used to dictate that SharePoint list. And in my sense, I've actually got my SharePoint list that's created by an M365 group. As you can see, it's a private group. So it's dictated by a Microsoft 365 group. So I just need to know what is that group name. So I actually come over here and I find that in my case, the group name is called as a shopping list app. I name the group tied to an app. So when I go to that M365 group and I basically look at all of this from an Azure standpoint because Azure portal just makes it so much more easier for me to see it. So I come over here now and I look at my members. All right, so in my members, that group has only these four of them. It doesn't have the member that I'll be testing with, the one we just did. Finn doesn't test it, all right? Finn doesn't have access over here. Finn is not a member. Next is when I come over here, I need to also go ahead and get what is called as the object ID. Make sure you get this object ID. It's a big GUID. Go ahead. In fact, what's beautiful about Azure portal is you just come over here, click on copy and it will copy and save that in your clipboard, which means the next time you go somewhere else, you can just do a control V and you actually get this copied from there. So this is the key thing is you need to know what is the M365 group tied to your data source and go ahead and get the object ID. Once you are got that information, you're actually done all the way here. Now we'll just focus everything on the Canvas app side. So we're back into the Canvas app. And like I said, now pretty much for the rest of the video, we'll be focusing on this property, which is the start screen. Now, what I want to do is I want to basically go ahead and get all the users who are tied, that members that we just saw tied to that object ID, which is that security group, go ahead. I mean, that Microsoft 365 group, go ahead and get those things. But I want to do a filter. What I want to do is filter all the users in that with the user who is signed in. And if the filter matches, great, then go ahead and give me access to the screen. But if it doesn't match, 
that's when I want you to go and do me a redirect to the denied screen. So how do we achieve that? What is the formula for that? So let me break that formula down into a few different sections. So the first thing is what is the data source to go ahead and actually test those M365 groups. So for that, I actually come into my data section over here, and this is the connector. It's called Office 365 Groups. It's a standard connector, so you can already go and start using it. And that's the group, that's the connection that you wanna make to go ahead and get this connector. So that's the first thing, you've gotta go and do that. Next, I go back to my app, and I go to my start screen property, and over there, I'm gonna go and start doing a filter function. So I'm gonna now say filter, I'm gonna type in filter, right here, and when I just start typing in, IntelliSense kicks that in, and now I'll go ahead and just start typing in Office 365 Groups, right there, and see Office 365 Groups, again, IntelliSense kicks in, and that's the one that I want, Office 365 Groups dot list group members. Click that in, and now it's actually telling me that, hey, what I need you to do is give me the group ID. Remember, the group ID is what we copied over there, so just to make sure I have it, I come back into my Azure AD portal, I make sure it's object ID, I click on it, so I've got it copied into my clipboard. Now remember, it says object ID over here. In Power Apps, it basically says group ID. It's the same thing. You're getting the object ID of that group. Now we just open up a double quotes, paste it, close the double quotes, and you've pretty much got that syntax right down over there. Now I'll go and close it. And I'm gonna say, I wanna go ahead and get the value. Value, and then what value is it? Because there's a few values available. So I click on it, and now it's gonna give me some other options. Well, let me see what it gives me. Well, mail is the most unique one. Mail stands for the email address. That's the most unique one. So I'll go and click on that. And now I need to compare that with the user who signed in. How do I know the user who signed in the app? How do I get that email address? Well, there's actually something available out of the box and that is using the user function. So I just click on the user function. Again, love how IntelliSense gives me the option. Close the brackets, dot, and then right there, I've got email. So that is how I can do some comparison. I went ahead and got from the ARM365 groups, all the members, and I'm gonna only reference the mail over there, which is the mail property. And from the Power App standpoint, I'm gonna use the user function and grab the email property. That is how I will do the filtering. And now I can go ahead and do a close. So if I go and do a close, it is giving me an error. So I've achieved the filtering function, but what I need to do is now validate it. Well, how do I validate it? Well, that one is I'm gonna put in an if function, and in the if function, I'll basically put another bracket so I know what it is, but in between the two open brackets, I'm gonna use an is empty functionality. Oh, I said is blank, I said is empty is the one I want. That's the one that I'm gonna use. So I went in and put in the if, right after if, inside it I put it is empty. I'm gonna hit my end button, which goes all the way towards the end. Now I'm gonna close this bracket. I'll gonna close it, and I'm gonna put in true. So it is gonna validate that, hey, this filtering that you did, is it empty? Because if you got a match, then it's not gonna be empty. However, if it did not match, then this is going to be empty, which means that is empty function will be true. And so if it is true, then I go ahead and click on comma, and then I just go ahead and now say, I'm gonna access the denied screen. This is where it's important for you to understand how it works. By the way, I, go, I close the brackets, I don't get any squiggly lines, I've got it completely accurate. However, here is where I see people make a few mistakes. What happens is when they go and say com at, right at the end in the comma and denied screen, they tend to put in, and this is basically out of habits, we're doing it for a while, I did it too, is they'll start putting in the navigate function over there. And I'll show you what that means. Like, you, know, you, you put in the comma equals true, if it is true, I want you to navigate to another function. So you start typing in, navi uh, start typing in navigate over here, and you know what happens? the navigate function doesn't come. In fact, IntelliSense doesn't go and give me. It's like, well, why don't, doesn't navigate function over there? This is a start screen, I should be able to navigate. Well, let's think about it. The whole function is tied to a screen, which means it already knows that, hey, I don't need to put in a navigate function. Somehow, somewhere, I need to go ahead and navigate to another screen. So in that case, this whole section over here already has kind of the built-in navigate function. So you don't have to type that in, basically just go ahead and put in the screen name. And in my case, my screen name is actually called as denied screen. So I'll just do that, go ahead and close it, and basically the formula is done. This is basically the whole point of the entire video is how do I go ahead and put this formula. So now let's go ahead and replicate the de demo that I showed you, but we'll walk through it step by step. So going back to the Azure portal, this is that security group, which is the N365 group, by the way. And over there, these were the four members. So Rosanna, she is one of the members. So let's try to replicate the scenario with Rosanna. So now I go back over here, I have signed in as Rosanna Christian. The moment she shines, she signs in, she's able to go ahead and actually access the main screen. 
So how is that working though? Well, let's go back and take a look at it from the studio standpoint. So I come back to my power apps and we see that okay, if Rosanna has signed in, then first it is going to verify to see is Rosanna a member of that list, which means when she signs in, it'll go grab her email address. Then it'll go ahead and do a filter against all the members of that list. And we verify that she's in there. And then the filter will actually not be empty. The value will come as one, but because the filter is not empty, it won't take you to the denied screen. It takes you to the default screen, which in our case is the main screen over here. That's the first scenario. Second scenario was when we actually got and signed in as a username Finn Christian. When Finn accessed the link of the app, that user directly got navigated to this denied screen. Well, let's go take a look at that as, as well. We go ahead and sign in again as our regular self. I go into my portal, Azure portal, and I don't see Finn over here. So keeping that in mind, we go back into our formula right over here in the formula. And now let's take a look at it. Again, the filter is happening. We're going to go ahead and reference Finn's email address and do a check against all the group members, all right? All four of them, it is doing a check. And guess what? The filter came back as zero. It is completely empty. Because it is empty, in this case, the is empty is equal to true or yes. And because it is true, it does get to the navigate screen. I mean, the denied screen. See, this is basically how the formula works over here. This is how the whole magic is happening. And so now do you understand how this is happening? Keep in mind though, that now all of this happens only on the start screen. It no longer happens on the on start screen. Now in closing, I wanna give a big shout out to Billy. <laughs> Billy was the one who motivated me to record this video because this is something I've talked about in, in passing, uh, but I just wanted to now make a video dedicated to this topic. And Billy is the one who motivated me to do that. So Billy, this one is for you. So hopefully this video was helpful. And as always, keep using Power Apps. Hey everyone, hopefully you found this video useful. And if you did, can you help me help you? Can you subscribe to this YouTube channel? Because remember, I provide fresh content on a weekly basis and it's 100% free. So if you have subscribed, thank you so much and pass the word. But if you haven't, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.